Coming up next on The Spot, we reach out across the internet and talk to Bioware about its upcoming RPG, Mass Effect. We'll check in on Cooking Mama 2, Harvey Birdman, Nano Stray 2, and A Little Crisis. We'll also get to the bottom of the Rock Band box to try to figure out exactly how long it's going to take to set up the drums. Meanwhile, I'll be thinking about how I'm going to make space for a miniature drum kit in my already packed game playing zone. I recommend you start doing the same. On the Spot starts now! On the Spot has begun. It is Thursday. It is 4 p.m. It is time to talk about games. Because that's what we do here. I'm Jeff Gersman, your host, and I'm joined by Ryan Davis. Ryan, what's up, man? Uh, apparently games are coming out right now, Jeff. I don't know if you knew that. but uh, I, I did know that. Right, like, right now, uh -huh. we're basically in between the two weeks where like, all of the year's games come out. So, yeah, uh, super, super crazy. Yeah. Know, next week, a, a huge week uh, with, with games like Mass Effect and Rock Band, both of which we're going to be talking a little bit about here on the show. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, let's, let's jump into it. Okay, let's jump right into it. We're actually going to go live. I, you know, they don't put the headset on my desk unless, uh, unless we're going to be talking to someone very important. And we are going to be talking to someone very important. It is Casey Hudson of Bioware, sir, Mass Effect, you've been living and breathing this game for, for how long now? Uh, about three and a half years. Three, that, that is a very long time. How does it feel to be done and have the game like just about out the door? Uh, it feels really good. Um, we uh, get a little bit of time out of the office. We get that strange feeling where uh, it kind of happens at the end of a project where you, you find yourself in your house with free time. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's, it, it's, it's extremely weird. It just um, feels well, really well, you, you could spend that time going out to like various retailers that have broken the street date and beating them up or something, right? <laughs> Actually, it's been kind of fun. It's, it's kind of a, an early look at uh, what people think of the game. Cool. So, all right, let's, let's, for people who aren't aware, for the, the two people out there who, who don't already know what Mass Effect is all about, uh, what can you tell us about the game? Well, you are, uh, it's about 200 years in the future. And you play uh, a character uh, that's, that's really a veteran of the Human Alliance. You're one of the top military agents just at the time when uh, humanity's making its first step onto the galactic stage. And um, you're trying to become a specter. And a specter is, uh, there's kind of representatives from different civilizations that get to uh, kind of represent the, uh, the galactic interests way out in deep space get the authority to really operate with impunity and make decisions that uh, um, are really tricky situations. So we get, you have to be in this situation where you're, you have these really tough decisions to make and uh, it's, you're kind of discovering what's really wrong with the galaxy. And it, it definitely seems like there is quite a bit wrong for you to go out there and yeah, fix. Um, now, as far as the, the gameplay that people are going to see, we, we've seen a lot of trailers from you guys focusing on the dialogue. I mean, that's obviously like a very major part of the game, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, and, and it might seem at first like kind of an odd choice for a video game, but really the things that you do in a video game, you know, whether it's getting a great item or being in, in a tough fight um, or whatever it is, the things that you do are, are made better because of context, and context is better because of story. And we know from, from really great movies and, and uh, stories and things, it's really that human experience that makes the story really great. And so if we can bring human emotion to the story, then everything that you do in the game is going to be... All right, cool. So now, what about uh, the actual gameplay? I mean, it, it is a role-playing game. I've seen a little bit of the combat myself, kind of action-oriented, but you know, there's definitely like spell casting and that sort of stuff there. How would you describe it? Uh, it's it's very much like what you'd expect from a current uh, kind of third-person shooter, where you've got uh, it, you know the kind of state of the art stuff you'd expect, like being able to take cover, lean around, cover and fire, um, and it's it's actually quite a fast combat style. But the cool thing is that we give you this interface where you can hang on to the right shoulder button and make really smart decisions about what everybody in your squad is going to do. Then you let go and you're back into real time. And again, it's real time really chaotic with all kinds of physics and the stuff that you can do, these special abilities, um, whether it's combat stuff with special weapons, you've got tech abilities, you've got biotic abilities where you're basically throwing people around with dark energy, and these things all have a ton of physics stuff, and it actually happens really fast. It's explosive action, 
but you do have the ability to hammer that right button, right shoulder button, and kind of grab control of what's going on so that you can, you can be really smart about what all your squad members are doing. And that's important to us because you're actually developing these characters over the course of the game. So how, uh, now to talk a little bit more about character development, um, now the character creation in this game seems really super crazy just with the, how deep you can get and, and also kind of the, the effects that that has on the story. Um, you know, how, how many different parts of the game are impacted by the choices you make at the very beginning in terms of like character class and, and your character's background and such? Uh, really, as, as much as we possibly can. It's everything from uh, things that people will say to you to plots that open up and right down to moment to moment what you have the ability to do in terms of your, uh, your combat action. So like, you might make a choice early in the game about, uh, say, what your backstory is. And then later, um, maybe 15 hours into the game, somebody's going to run up and do something, and they're going to they're going to talk to you and uh, and say like, I can't believe that thing that you did. And they they might be referencing something that you chose in character creation. That sounds completely completely heavy, and definitely seems like a game you're going to want to play through more than once if there are that many differences, right? Right. Yeah, actually, this is probably our most. Uh, replayable game that we've ever made because you've got all these different character classes that are really well balanced from one another and very different. Um, that also kind of dictates a little bit of who you want to bring with you in terms of squad members. And then, and then these squad members have different personalities. So you'll experience the story in different ways. Cool. All right. Well, Casey, thanks a lot for uh, joining us through the magic of the internet. Then we use the internet to beam it out across a different part of the internet. Uh, the, the game is Mass Effect, and it's out next week. Uh, enjoy your time off, or you're, actually, you're probably already on to the next thing, right? No, no rest for the wicked? No, we're right on to the next thing. All right, thanks a lot for coming by. All right, right now we're, we are going to send it over uh, to Aaron Thomas, who is uh, unboxing Rock Band, what, and going to show us what's inside this box. Aaron, what's up? I love Rock Band. I have Rock Band. And we're going to open it up. I'm going to show you what's inside and how long it takes to put the drums together. If someone like me can do it quickly, then probably all you guys out there can. So this is a near final uh, box. So that's pretty much what you're going to see. On top, we have drums. I'm going to bust them out. Let's dig into these first. These are big boxes. All right. One more box. All right. It's a box with boxes in it. Hey, would that be the Xbox 360 Rock Band drums? This is them. This are them. Maybe. I can't get them out. I'm too weak. Arr! There we go. You have to be smarter than the box, Aaron. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No one told me that. All right. So we've got the drums here. Two drum heads. And we've got, uh, we've got the pedal. We got some feet, and we got the drumsticks in here, and, and uh, that's the drums. I'm going to get started on those next. We have uh, what's left in the box. We got the microphone, the USB. The game also works with your headset if you have it plugged in there, so you don't have to do that. Microphone, yeah, you, can, you, can, you can kick it like Britney Spears, or actually sing. Uh, we got the, the USB hub here. We plug all the instruments in if you have them all in there. And we have the guitar. Which is mostly put together. It is missing the, the little top here, which is in here. But uh, it's the guitar. Got uh, some bubble wrap on it, chords. And I'm going to get started on the drums. If that's okay with you. Go right ahead. We, we want to we see how these drums look when they're actually well, together. If you, can, if you can do it, I don't know. That looks like a pretty know. involved process. Aaron, uh, how about if we check back in with you later All right. to see uh, if you've actually managed to put this damn thing together over the course of the show. I'm going to get to work. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, now I am joined by Brad Shoemaker. Brad, how you are? <laughs> I, I, here I am. I don't know. Here, here don't you know are. What and you've got uh, DS, and we've got Nanostray 2 from Majesco for the DS.
Okay. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's, what's Why don't I tell you a little something about this game? Yeah, yeah. It's a I'm 2D <laughs> side-scrolling shooter. It is. <laughs> That's all I know. I'll talk uh, about I'll, the I'll game. let you tell me about the game. Okay, about that? Uh, so there was Nano Stray. It was a DS shooter, like you said. Now so there's this is Nano uh, Stray 2. the sequel. This is also right. the same guys who made Iridian for the GBA. Which oh, okay, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, that, you, if you remember that game. I do remember that was so, uh, kind of a, a cutting edge for the, the system at the time. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to jump right into the adventure mode or the story mode here. Uh, which I didn't play the first game. This seems a little more involved than the first game, which, uh, from what I read in the review, is basically just a linear shooter. This one has a little bit of a story. There's a little bit of cutscenes in between, and then the, as you can see, the the half branches here. So uh, I haven't played any of these levels, so I'm probably going to get totally worked. But I'm going to pick. Uh, so how, how far into the game? Oh, are this you is at this, this is like I beat the first mission. Okay, and, so you're, you're and still it's like you, very early on. You play a first mission, and then you get this choice to go different places. So, so what are we looking at? You got here? all the ship set up here, so you can set the speed of your ship. Uh, these are your special weapons. You can only pick one. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for. This heat seeker right here. There's also like a. What are the other ones? Uh, there's one that's just like a solid straight big beam. There's okay. one that kind of fans out around your ship. Okay. Um, the cool part and what are is these three? Uh, so you get power ups that are sort of like options in like the old shooters where you have an extra little ball shooting around you. Uh huh. And these little sliders here, you can actually slide back and forth. I don't know if you can see on the stream, but. It actually changes. You can preset three directions at those little option. So is that something that you can then toggle between yeah. on so, fly in the game? Yeah, so you have, oh, to, that's cool. you have to preset these three positions here, but then once you're in the game, yeah, you can switch between the three. I'll show you when we get in here. Cool. So, so, uh, so from from what you've seen so far, pretty straightforward 2D yeah, uh, yeah, side scroll like shooter. Super old school. Uh, well, you know what? Although it looks like it's it's using some uh, some crazy camera stuff, and yeah, you were yeah. Uh, um, You're gonna have to play better than that, Brad. Well, there's actually a fair bit of lag going on right here <laughs> because of all the video equipment that we have hooked up. So this is gonna be extra hard. Excellent. But uh, anyway, the, I actually didn't expect to see a top-down scrolling stage. So a little bit of a little bit of an einhander kind of uh, yeah, like it, touch here it where the background is yeah, yeah, it's scrolling all around going you. Going crazy, but like the first stage was a left-to-right side-scrolling shooter. So apparently. Uh, there's they know what uh, shooter fans want, which is lots and lots of shooting. Yeah, and variety. So okay, so I got one of the little things. Let me get my other one, and then I'll show you how you can toggle these things. Whoa! You got right, a couple so, of them. So, so there. I got them, and so I can just hit one of the shoulder buttons, and then it switches to one of those other presets I made. Excellent. Uh, and so you can then tweak that. Is there anything more than just the three settings, or is that? Uh, uh, yeah, for, well, from what I've seen from so what far, you've seen anyway, so far, yeah, right? You've, you've only got the three. So obviously, uh, we're very early on, and the little blue things are just uh, health regenerating. Um, they fill your your special weapon meter, which is like the heat seeking one that I picked. Earlier. Okay. So can you actually uh, upgrade your stock? Bullets, or not, are you just, or so far has it just been? Yeah, like I said, not not too far in, but so far it's just been like you get these two little extra shooters, and you've got your one power up thing. I mean, a uh, special weapon, and you just kind of go. Well, I I have to say I kind of like the uh, the 3D graphics that they're using. Here. Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad to see something like this on the DS. You know, I mean, not not a genre that gets a lot of play these days. So, ouch. Uh, yeah. Are you gonna make um, it? You've only got one dude left. Yeah, you get a few continues, but not as many. Oh, there's one up. There you go. Yeah. Back in the game. Uh, and then back not out. Not for it's... long. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think I'm about to die out here. Just Morning. Uh, well, oh, we get to see the big boss what's, first, what's, which what's is like a crazy a, robot a snake. Jet snake thing. from the past. Yeah, okay. Into the future. Yeah. Oh, bullet patterns. <laughs> oh, so, God. Robot snakes are most definitely from the, oh, the future. I'm done. The future okay, past. You've got so, continues. Why don't you just keep, well, uh, keep there's on actually, riding? Well, there's actually oh, some other to... modes if you if uh, we have time to show those. Yeah, let's jump into, let's jump into let's, another let's mode. Let's hop out got, uh, and see what else we got. So there's the ar arcade mode just opens up the stages that you finished in Adventure, and you can play them whenever. Okay. Uh, Practice. Yeah, pretty much. Challenge is brutal. This, this thing is hard. More so than what we were just seeing. Yeah, I mean, these are all real quick challenges, like this one, fly through the course without getting hit, get a score of 45,000 in 30 seconds, destroy 14 waves. So the, the checked ones are ones you've already done here? Uh, yeah. And okay, so this, one, all, this one just survived 25 seconds? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's all that I have been able to do. These are <laughs> real hard. Um, and you, you unlock a simulator mode, which I can't tell you about because I haven't managed to unlock it yet. Fair enough. Because <laughs> these things are tough. you got to beat at least one whole set of eight challenges to get a simulator. And, whoa, oh! So oh, yeah, so I made you, just, it, you just have to... I made it six seconds into that one, you know? Oh, why don't you give that another oh, shot? All right. I'll, I'll, I'll give you another swing at this. So I, this I isn't mean, even like survive a regular stage. It's survive this horrible little death chamber. Yeah, they're, they're these real, real short, like 30 seconds or less kind of challenges. Whoa! Oh, God, why do I suck so much? 
I, I can try. You know, we don't really have enough time I to know, address know, questions know, of this I magnitude, can, Brad. <laughs> I can, I can, let, me, let me try jumping. I'll try. There. It, you, we'll let's, give you one more shot at one of these other let's, ones. Let's destroy 14 waves, why don't we? Is this one uh, another one locked into this little. Uh, now this one looks no, like no, it's actually, they're yeah. they're all totally different. It's it's actually pretty cool to just kind of jump in and. Uh, oh, so this is just like the bonus stage in Gradius. Exactly. Yeah. In, I mean, uh, well, the, Galaga. So yeah. They want to murder you. Whoa! Oh no! I bet that didn't count as a wave because I missed one of them. Oh! This is the uh, one of the other special weapons that I was talking about. That's the one that kind of shoots around you. Whoa! Oh. And then, well, you've also got 98 dudes. Is that uh, true? Yeah, but I've finished two waves and I have two seconds left. So. I oh, I see. Think I'm just about done. Yep. So uh, yeah, those challenge modes are totally brutal. Um, I'm gonna exit out of this one. But uh, and yeah, uh, there, there's the simulator mode, which uh, I would love to tell you about. But you have to survive a bunch of these challenge modes before you can get to it. Cool. So uh, that's uh, that's kind of Nano Stray 2 uh, in a nutshell yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, kind of a solid 2D shooter. Seems like pretty straightforward yeah. uh, shooting action yep. for, for the folks that like that kind of stuff. Well, when uh, when is this made? Uh, they, they is it, is they it haven't next announced, week? No, no. <laughs> Luckily for you, no, it's not. Yeah, no. Um, they haven't announced a firm release date yet, but it seems fairly final, so, you know, could be soon. So we don't know. Yeah. Sometime. Yep. That'll hit the DS. Yes, everybody pick at the Majesco office and, and demand a release date. Well, Brad, thanks yeah. for uh, giving us a look at that. We'll have sure. you back on in a little bit. Okay. Let's check back in with Aaron Thomas on his rock band assembly process. Aaron, how's it going? Surprisingly well. Uh, wow. I struggled for a few minutes, and then I went with the veteran move, and uh, I used the instructions. Which, ah, uh, you broke cheating. down. That's totally cheating. Do you need like an Allen wrench? Is it like Ikea? No, no, it's actually really easy once you figure out like I, that uh, there's these, these metal pieces here. I couldn't figure out where they went. But uh, yeah, you slide them into the feet. That part's done. You slide these two poles in here. And there's a cool uh, locking mechanism here so you can actually adjust the size. So if you're short or tall or growing, you can, you can change them. <laughs> If you're short and then become tall. Yes. You can change them like no problem, like mid song. And uh, <laughs> so that's basically them put together so far. Uh, not totally done yet. You still have but, to, uh, does the bass pedal actually attach to that whole rig? Yeah, the bass pedal's gonna get to the bottom. I mean, Don't give it away! Oh, oh spoilers. We need to, you're spoiling <laughs> the end of the show! <laughs> so, yeah, I gotta get to the bass pedal, I gotta bust out the drumsticks, finish putting together the guitar, but it's going pretty good so, so far. So, we're looking at like 20 minutes since you unboxed this, and uh, oh, you've I'm already got that assembled, and uh, you're almost ready to rock. But he hasn't even busted out the lathe or chopped down any trees to make the drumsticks. Oh, so. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, where, that's how they get you every time. I gotta get to, I gotta get to work. So. The lathe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it feels pretty sturdy and it's surprisingly easy. And uh, I don't know, you're not going to want to take them apart all the time, even though your wife, girlfriend, parents, whoever is going to be yelling at you to put this, put this stuff away. But uh, if you have to, it doesn't look like it's going to be too tough. So does it feel like something that, you know, in between rock band sessions, when you do stop playing, you could maybe store a jacket on that thing? Maybe put, you know, multi is it multi-purpose? Yeah, like multi I, think, uh, I think you could probably line your shoes up right down here on the bottom. Can I eat dinner on it? Yeah, you've got, I'd say you could probably put a jacket here, and you could probably eat dinner here. So, you know, there's really a lot going on. If you had the heads on, you could keep singing while you, uh, while you ate dinner. Awesome, Aaron. Well, uh, thanks a lot. Keep, uh, keep cracking away on that, and we'll check back with you at the end of the show to see how that finally goes. And now, you've been waiting three and a half years for it. It is the last pre-release Mass Effect trailer. After this one, you will be able to go and get the game yourself if you haven't already found a retailer that's already selling it.
And uh, we are back, and I am still joined by Brad Shoemaker. I ain't going anywhere. You've uh, brought the DS games yes. uh, for I'm, real I'm today. D I'm DS and hard today. And we've got Cooking Mama 2. Yes, the cooking. The sequel to Cooking Mama. Cooking with Friends is I gotta the say, subtitle. Majesco folks, they're really pushing the envelope with the uh, sequel titles. Yeah. They're it's, uh, it's, yeah, putting it's it out there. Pretty innovative. No response, yes. that's it? I, I don't know. All so. right. All right. Uh, yes, so, so, this obviously uh, the sequel to Cooking Mama, which was Crazy Cooking Simulation. Yeah, so the gameplay, the core gameplay, you know, cutting stuff with your stylus and all that sort of thing. Right. Pretty much the same. Um, the I think the biggest new mode in here is called Let's Cook, which I'm going to jump into right now. Uh, so Shouldn't it be Let's Cooking? Uh, that would be better, yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe they'll still have time to change that. Uh, so, you can pick who to cook for here. I'm going to. You know, fix the English translation. Yeah. Uh, so what sort of foods? Were, I remember in the original Cooking Mama, the food was kind of crazy. Yeah, so they've uh, they've gone a little more kind of international in this one. There's still a lot of Japanese food, but now you'll see. Uh, let's see, what what does what does Chica want me to make so here? More fried and breaded pork cutlet. Chili dog, pizza. Does the pizza have think, mayonnaise the, on these it? These are these are culinary items that speak to you, right? Yes. Uh, to my people. Papa is interested in. Oh, there's a cooking Papa. Cookie and a baguette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. my heart's just been broken. <laughs> I always thought Cooking Mama was available. Uh, a single, a single mama. Yeah, so, I didn't. I thought it. Well, I thought it was like an honorary title. Well, now here we got a paprika marinade. I don't know about all this stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the meatloaf. It's, it's good, solid. Wait, did you just say paprika marinade? That's what it said. All right. All right, I'm breaking an egg. So you just uh, break. There you go. Break. Did you break it too hard and mess up the whole thing. Or? Probably. But I don't roll like oh, that. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh. You only have two eggs. Your dish is not going to be ideal. So the, the thing about this so. let's cook thing is uh, it's basically sort of like marathon cooking mama. Like, it doesn't really give you a lot of instructions. I mean, it tells you what to do, but it doesn't show you exactly how to do it. And they all just kind of fly at you, so... So maybe a little bit uh, WarioWare-ish? Um, I mean, obviously... Kinda, yeah. Obviously the pacing not, was... Not quite the same. The pacing is a little more frantic like that. And also, if you screw any any one of these tasks up too much, then they'll just shut you down. You can't even finish making the dish. So you gotta crush the garlic and then chop the garlic. That's yep. kinda cool. Yeah. Crush, then chop. Let's see what we got next. So it doesn't seem like they've really changed the, the basic concept yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't see what I'm doing, but, like, you know, I'm swiping this onion... Well, we can see the little lines, to, and obviously that's where yeah. you're... Uh, so, yeah, I'm just cutting like that. Pretty forgiving as far as the controls. Um, to some extent, some of them are actually pretty tough. Uh, like I, I was making this eel dish, and I had yeah, to you totally dice that up, dude. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> now you gotta mix it all oh, together. This one's hard because I gotta look at the big salt, screen. salt, salt. Okay, you call the uh, items, and I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll swipe uh, them. Uh, What's it gonna be? I don't know. That oh, it's pizza stuff. thing. That's oh, I don't think that was garlic, wasn't it? No, you're right. You're right. Oh, Meats it's... are red. Ketchup. Ketchup. <laughs> Same thing. Other oh. stuff. Garlic. Bread crumbs. Bread crumbs. Yeah, I don't totally know. Totally no idea what. I don't white stuff. Cream. Fresh cream. What are you uh, making? I, I was Sloppy Joe. Blue stuff. Uh, and was then it pepper. I, and then the egg. 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 I thought the egg went in first, but who knows? All right. Yeah. Made. We mix. All right. Oh, so no, now, now we I gotta. No, oh, now I have to spice. I think. I think I'm like kind of. Like putting the spice. Kneading, in kneading in some spices. You gotta put it in the top there. there and the bottom too. Yeah. You need more spice up there. Yeah, this is pretty hectic. So yeah, no, that, like at up, like up top. Hello. Like more up. That's okay. I'm just doing what she tells me to. Dude, right. I don't, I don't want to argue with Mama. No, you do not. I, I don't think she's a woman to be trifled ah, with. Ah, whatever. <laughs> cooking Mama, will kick your ass. I, I, I think <laughs> so. Yeah. But you shouldn't be worried about cooking Papa. That guy is weak. Yeah, yeah, he's totally whipped. So you're making a burrito? Yeah, meat, meat, a, a meat eater. Meat only meat, burrito. A burrito. Bur so you just uh, peel the. Foil off of it when you're done and something like that. We well, don't actually get to eat the food, unfortunately. Cooking Mama eats foil. Cooking Mama <laughs> is a robot. <laughs> so one Sorry, of the, one of the many revelations. I didn't mean to spoil the end of the game for you. <laughs> almost there. Almost there. Come on. Last one. Oh, you got time. Cooking a lot of meatloaf here. He looks pretty good. I can't really blame him. I don't think I've ever cooked meatloaf that way. 180 I just degrees. Like a pan. I, I kind of want to try it now. All right, so I have to pick the right. Where is it? 180. That's the one. All right. So yeah, I mean, in the main game, you know, you get more instruction per task and all that stuff. Uh, I'm gonna just cut this thing up real quick. Uh, the, so, so slice and sir. I want yeah. a bigger piece than that. Sorry, dude. You can just take two pieces, dude. All right. I don't want two pieces. Done. Then you don't get to have any, Jeff. Meatloaf made. Fine, I don't even like Eat! So <laughs> Eat! So at the end, at the end of this mode, they Tasting? get all they get all Iron Chef mm. on you, like they whip out the judges and oh? make. So, meatloaf makes flowers. Apparently, I made a pretty good meatloaf. 
<laughs> All right. I'm fairly stoked about that. Well, that's uh, definitely it looks like that's uh, going to scratch the itch of uh, for, for cooking mama things yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they added some character customization. You can see mama's in her evening wear there. Uh, but yeah, you know, pretty pretty similar core gameplay. Very cool. Uh, uh, coming to the DS again. Uh, very soon. Very soon. Uh, I think in the next couple weeks. Sweet. Yep. Brad, thanks for uh, stopping by. Sure. Uh, Jeff, what is up next? Well, what's up next is I'm now joined by Dane Cycle. Now, you're our uh, Men in Dream Job intern. I guess we should explain that. There, uh, there was a contest held uh, or like earlier this year that you entered and, and won, and you get to come spend a week with us, right? Yes, yeah, I wrote an essay and uh, won a contest, and I get to spend my dream job here at GameSpot. Awesome. Has, has it been a dream yet, filing away tapes and getting sandwiches like an intern would? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> no, we haven't made you do anything too intern-like, otherwise it wouldn't be a, a dream job. You'd be silently hate, well, maybe you already silently hate all of us, I don't even know. <laughs> um, but uh, yesterday we sat you down with a game and uh, wanted to have you on the show to, to tell us what you thought of it. The game is Crisis. Now this is one of the biggest PC releases of the year, a big old fancy first person shooter, one of those games that makes you want to upgrade your, your PC and all that stuff. Uh, you spent some time with it, uh, what did it do for you? Um, I, it was, the graphics were amazing on mm -hmm. the game. Uh, I liked uh, what I liked the most about it was uh, the weapons. You can customize the weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, you can add a scope, take whatever you want, add a laser, whatever you want to do with your weapons. You can basically, change it a lot. And um, another thing that I really liked about the game was uh, that the the detail. There's a lot of attention to detail. Like you know, you shoot at a tree with a submachine gun, the mm -hmm. tree's gonna fall over, and right. And that's something that you know you don't normally see. It's a pretty expensive saw sawing <laughs> down trees with a yeah. with an Uzi or something like that. But uh, but hey, it gets the job done, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, your character has this crazy nano suit in the game that lets you have extra strength and all this stuff. Uh, what would you think of that? It seems like it, it allows you to do some really crazy stuff. Yeah, it was really cool because you had a couple different options. You could either go in your super fast mode, but you're based on your energy. So when your energy runs out, you're basically stuck. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, you can go invisible, and that was cool. And you know, if you were more into stealth like I am, then you can sneak up on everyone and then disappear real quickly too. So. Right. And then there's also the strength mode where you can just take someone and chuck them across the map. So. Was there any one mode that you preferred more? Like, what, what, how do you normally play games like this? What's your style? I'm more of a stealth, definitely stealth. Mm -hmm. I like to sneak up behind people so they don't see it coming. So. Yeah, that's, I, I, can't, I can't do that. I don't have the patience to sneak up behind people. I just, just open fire, just mow them down, just take care of business, <laughs> you know? But uh, that seems like it's, it's a pretty cool you know, addition to the game is that you can play it either way like that and, and get your way through it. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I mean, there was just there's obviously in different uh, situations you you're gonna use a different mode, your strength mm -hmm. or whatever to get over something. But um, you can basically go on whatever preference you, you like the best. So. Cool. Now, uh, how about the graphics in the game? It's it's one of those games that people are saying like, oh, this is the greatest video game ever made and all that stuff. What do you think? It's very uh, lifelike, definitely. Mm -hmm. the, the characters and you can you know you can see the stubble on their beard and everything. It's <laughs> you know it's very uh, realistic. Uh, in that the, it's just amazing that it did blow me away. The graphics were awesome. Mm. Cool. Well, we'll wrap it all up for me. Crisis. You know, are, are you? Do you already own a copy? Are you going to run out and buy one? Do you have the PC to handle it? You know, is it? I mean, I just built my P, my computer like about a year ago, and it wouldn't be able to handle it. And I mean, I wouldn't exactly go out and build a brand new computer just to get it get the game. But I mean, it is definitely if you have the computer to run that type of game, then I would definitely. Uh, Go for it. All right, cool. Well, Dane, thanks again, and uh, congratulations. Uh, spend the rest of your intern week uh, taking notes for me, I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back after this. On the spot, we'll continue. And I am now joined by uh, Brian Eckberg. Yep, yep. How you doing, Ryan? I'm doing well. You brought along probably the, the game I'm most excited about here on the show today. Yeah, yeah. Harvey Birdman, attorney at law for the Nintendo Wii. That's right. The game based off of the popular Adult Swim uh, cartoon. Yes. Starring the Legal Eagle, I like to call him. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Har Harvey Birdman. <laughs> um, so this is uh, pretty interesting. This is being made by Capcom. Right. So it's it it seems, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit conspicuous how much this feels like uh, another certain legal series that uh, they've become known for. Yeah, it does feel a lot like uh, Phoenix Wright, of course, but um, it, it's, it, it balances nicely. It feels like Phoenix Wright in terms of gameplay, but a lot of this game, you're just watch it feels like you're watching a Harvey B Birdman episode, which is awesome. Because so it's, it's the show's a, really funny. It's a lot of good comedy in here. Incredible. We're, we're really about funny. to jump into a case you've already kind of gotten into. Why don't you set us up what we're going to see here? Well, this is the second case, and uh, we're starting towards the end of the case. Basically, 
basically what happened is Harvey had his office broken into. Okay. And there's lots of different suspects, and you investigate different scenes, and you round up suspects like McGill Gorilla and Secret Squirrel, and you interrogate those the guys. The usual the suspects. The usual crew. And, uh, and the funny thing is, Harvey is a, is a defense attorney, but um, he is forced to defend the people who have actually robbed him. <laughs> it's a pretty good comedic situation. He's forced to prove the innocence of the people who actually robbed him. All right, let's go. So it's really funny. So we actually have... At this point, we've proven the innocence, and we're moving on to another, uh, another case. Hey, am I uh, interrupting anything? Come on in, Birdman. You're the man of the hour. Oh, who's the stiff? Birdman. Just what this party needs. More sausage in a soup. Oh, <laughs> so you're a real animal, they tell me. <laughs> I'm a primate! You know, I still don't have any clue what happened to all my stuff. Then let's figure it out. Oh, this will be great. Court is in the hot tub! All right, but I want to prosecute this time. It's my stuff we're talking about here. I call defense! Done and done. Harvey, call your first witness. Peanut? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'll testify. As long as I don't have to actually stand. Uh, deal. Go! I call Peanut to the stand. The bubble jet. <laughs> I know you had something to do with this. Come clean. All right. So there you have it, like all good trials in a, in a jacuzzi. So, so really, they're, they're aiming for even more uh, legal accuracy than Phoenix Wright. Yeah, this is definitely uh, by the book, as, as they call it. Yeah. All right, so now we're actually going to get into uh, the case. Let's, right, uh... we're going to see Peanut's first testimony, which okay. is actually really short. Okay, here goes. I didn't steal anything, period. How's that for a testimony? <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Now, we could watch that again, but I think I've got the, the I think we the figured out everything it. So we're going to move on. So now the idea is these uh, little crests here are uh, Harvey's gravitas points. Okay. If you uh, press someone too much and, it's, and the line of questioning is going nowhere, or if you present a piece of evidence that has nothing to do with what, what's happening on screen, you'll get a gravitas point taken away. If you lose them all, case over and you have to start over again. So you have to be very careful about what you um, what you press uh, what aspects of testimony you press on, on and you know, what evidence you Tell us uh, what you present pinned. okay I was playing darts at the bird cage that's where I ran into X the eliminator he seemed a bit intoxicated so I offered to look after his death ray device oh my I would do the same for any friend so now as you see you you see the all of the testimony on screen that's everything he said you can press or present evidence against any of the things he's already said uh, and the, I'll, I'll show you the evidence screen. Th this is all of the evidence that I've uh, collected throughout this case. Okay. Um, at the very beginning of the case, you have, uh, you have to investigate Harvey's office and uh, various other scenes, and you collect evidence with a little magnifying glass, and these are the different things that you uh, collect. And you also get profiles of all the different suspects in the case. There's Secret Squirrel, there's McGill Gorilla. McGill Gorilla. Yeah. Yeah, Great. that's the tiny private eye who, for some reason, He's is tied up. Private eye. Yeah, tiny private eye who is uh, tied up in your office in the very beginning. I, I will have to say that even on this first uh, screen, there's a ton of inside jokes here for uh, Harvey Birdman fans. Yeah, I, I, it seems like that's kind of par for the course for this game. Yeah, I'm not incredibly familiar with this uh, with the series, but I, I think you're absolutely right. So because I know what what we're doing here, um, I'm going to I'm going to present this cash as evidence, and you have a, a number of different options here. Knowing Peanut, I'd say that's probably a good thing to present him with. Yes, so we present it. Oh, now I will lose my precious Gravitas. Whatever that is. Oh. <laughs> I lost the Gravitas point. <laughs> it's been a day since I've played this. I've forgotten the entire thing. All right, well, let's see uh, what else we can present here. All right, so you go back and you can, uh, let's see. Oh, you're actually supposed to press him on this. So, you're friends with X the Eliminator. Well, by friend, I mean more like business associate. Mm. Then there would need to be the right reasons. Now we present them with the cash being cash being the right reasons for peanut. What about a million? Or at least a thousand reasons. Yeah, those would be the right reasons. All right. And then now um, there's, an, there's a death ray device that's part of this case. Of course. And uh, it, it ended up in Harvey's office and we've got to press him on that. As with any trial, yeah. obviously, you get that thing all the way back to my office by yourself. I drove. You don't have a car! I know, I drove X's car. So that explains those keys. Yep, regular old car keys. Yeah, let's see what X has to say about all of this. Next witness! That's my line, line taker! Um, 
Can I call X to the stand? Better! Tui <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> so, uh... Spill it, then? Baghead! Maybe. Can Maybe you not tell us what happened yeah. at all? T for teen? Yeah. Ball gags and blow-up dolls? Yeah. I was out. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this will get this will get the good for kids emblem. Yeah, yeah. So, X to eliminator is called to the stand, and we can continue our our uh, our testimony, or his testimony. Press him, present more evidence, and eventually you have to prove that he is the one who uh, actually went into Harvey's office and. and well, let's robbed. let's not uh, let's not show people how that goes down. Leave right. that uh, a mystery. Yes, there's more. The, the 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 nice thing about this game is that even in the the, the first mission is really quick. Just yeah. shows you how to do the basic courtroom stuff, uh, cross test uh, cross examination things like that. Once you get into the actual missions, and there's four other ones other than the tutorial. These take a, a while. You'll be investigating, talking to witnesses, and actually doing the trial. Itself. So pretty involved stuff here. Pretty involved, and, and it's really lots of fun. good lots of good comedy. Yeah, it's a hilarious game. Uh, so this is a Harry Birdman, Attorney at Law. I, I I said this earlier, but I really feel like this needs another subtitle like yeah they, there's something missing but it's just Harvey Birdman attorney at law this has come to the Wii and a ton of other consoles right yeah coming to PSP and PS2 and I believe they're all coming out in January excellent yeah uh, Brian uh, thanks for uh, coming by my pleasure uh, up next uh, I guess we're gonna check back in with Aaron Thomas on his rock band uh, construction project thing yeah I, I found these it says not to eat why don't you go ahead and gonna, pop back this? I was going to check it. For a job well done, that's your out. reward. I'm going to do it after the show. They look tasty. Don't, actually, find, I actually, it says legally, do not eat don't eat right those. on there. Don't eat okay. those. I will not eat those. poison. <laughs> you guys really like me. All right, so <laughs> I found uh, digging through the rest of the box. I no, it, it's, it's we want to tell the people at home not to eat them. You, I, uh, you go ahead, pop them back. But whatever. people at home, don't eat. So okay. Gel. Wait a minute. <laughs> No, right, you're anyway. special. You're In back. fact, there's a sandwich on your desk I'd like you to eat. Quit Aaron. trying to poison me and let me show you rock band. <laughs> so, uh, digging through here, I found, uh, I found the hub, which interestingly has its own power cable, so you guys can go ahead and start rearranging your, your uh, power outlets now. Try is, that, out. is that a brick on that? It's, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So, this, it's possible that maybe this isn't the super final one, but uh, it does need power. I, so. I believe it is because of how many devices you have to plug into... Yeah, like you got one a USB port on the 360. And uh, I'm happy to report that this is a very long cable for the microphone that I've already managed to tangle up. But uh, you can roam around, prance around your living room, and uh, and sing your heart out. I also uh, found this cool adapter, which lets you plug your headset right into right into this, and then you can plug it directly into the guitar or in the front of the drums, so you can go off Phil Collins and uh, and really rock. So that just kind of that plugs in on the front. Oh, here. you lost your bass pedal. Well, we'll, we'll bring we'll bring the bass pedal back. So yeah, that just plugs in right there. Um, so it doesn't have like just a, a little space for a, a standard uh, 360 headset to plug in. You have to, you have to use this little extra cable. Um, I don't know. It, in the drawing, it shows you plugging yeah the headset into the into the cable. Huh. So uh, I tried plugging it into a controller and singing that way. That worked too. So okay. you can do that. Uh, so I busted out the drumsticks. These are aren't super Very fancy. Very high quality drumsticks. They're definitely they're wood at least. Are they um, are they wood tipped or plastic tipped? Uh, they're wood tipped. Okay. And uh, so yeah, if you're really into it, you might want to get some fancy ones and get some cool pimped out ones. Uh, this does have a cool little uh, holder on top that you can put your drumsticks up there. Just like all the real drummers be using. Yeah. So you can just set them right right there. And that's amazing. And then we got the bass pedal, which sits down here on the bottom. And depending, I guess, on on your height and where how you sit, uh, you can, I guess, you can you can move it this way or this way, and uh, adjust it so it's comfortable for you. It's uh, it's pretty bouncy, and you do not have to wail on it like some people do the first time you see them see them play it. So I guess the big question is. How long and how easy is it to take it apart? So I'm just going <laughs> to take it apart. I've had my fun. I'm in trouble because I was up late playing, and I'm going to get in trouble for playing rock band. So I got to hide it from. I say when you when you break it or when you when you drop it all the way down, it doesn't seem like it it really takes up that much space. No, it doesn't. It uh, for something that's not huge, it feels really sturdy. But yeah, it doesn't take up a lot of space. You pop those off real easy. Legs done. 
How heavy are the legs? Could you use them as a weapon if, if you really, I mean, you know, if the chips were down? They're not really heavy, but uh, yeah, you could probably beat somebody senseless with them. All right. I think. You got two of them, so, you know, like if you break one, you've still got the others. And then you got the feet, which you could probably just throw back in the box, but if you want to take them apart, you just, you just do that, take them out. Cool. Now, how, how about controller compatibility? Um, obviously, Guitar Hero, guitars, there are a ton of those out there in the marketplace. Uh, yes, I own five or six. So. <laughs> See, I also own Konami guitars for the PS1, so I, <laughs> I, I, I got But those only have three of, buttons. Yeah, those only have three buttons, so now they're totally useless. Um, so what do we know about using Guitar Hero peripherals with Rock Band? Uh, we know that uh, they work. We've tried the wireless and the Guitar Hero 2 wired uh, controller, and they work fine. Uh, no problems there, although this one doesn't work with Guitar Hero, so you can't do that. Um, this, does, this does have the, the extra solo buttons up here, so like anytime it turns blue, you, you, can, uh, you can rock your solos up here, and those are just like the hammer on and pull off, so you don't have to strum. And it feels, uh, the buttons are a little, a little more recessed, so I feel like it's, it's pretty easy to slide. Um, and they're, they're pretty quiet. It also has, uh, you can make it lefty, you can just unscrew this right here, bust it out over on this side, and you can go oh, lefty. Oh, so it actually does have a good left-handed option yeah. there for that. Yeah. Except it doesn't, that doesn't move the whammy bar, so uh, when, when you actually play left-handed, the whammy bar is kind of, that that's that's goes for real guitars too, though. But so, yeah, you know. swapping it over is, is basically that easy. In fact, this one actually came set up left-handed, so might be a conspiracy. Or all right, something. so so when's all this stuff coming out, Aaron? Tuesday, November twentieth. Tuesday, uh, November twentieth. I've already got my copy pre-ordered. Yeah, the day we're gonna be really tired because we we played Rock Band all the time. So it's the wait's almost over. All right, well so, there, there you go. There you have it. That's Guitar that is Rock drums Band. done. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Uh, pretty intense. That's just going to about uh, do us here for the show, Ryan. Uh, I believe that is. Uh, good stuff. Good talking to Corey from uh, BioWare about Mass Effect. Game looks hot. Definitely. Definitely that game that looks super hot. And he looks super relieved. <laughs> like a huge three and a half year wait has been lifted off him. He's, he's sitting in his office. He's laid back like... <sighs> Uh, yeah, I mean, expectations for that game are, are just so astronomical, and I'm sure the, the pressures from all directions on him have to be huge. Although now, you know, he just finished that one. He doesn't get to know what people think of it, and he's already got to start uh, thinking about his next project. So, Such is life to him. In, the, in the hectic uh, video game development space. Indeed. I'd yeah. say also uh, on the show, really uh, enjoyed uh, Harvey Birdman. Oh, I totally. I, I'm dying to play that game for myself. Uh, it, it's like it's like the return of the FMV games in a way. Yeah, kind of. It's, like, it's Capcom better. taking Fox Hunt and making it for a new generation, but without <laughs> Rob Lowe. <laughs> yeah. So Fox Hunt, but not as good. Yeah, that's, that's basically what I'm saying. Uh, so uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow. We've got Tournament TV. It'll be Team Fortress 2, our big finals on the PC version of that. Uh, that should be very exciting. It's always exciting to watch uh, professionals, you know, guys that really know what they're doing, get in there and play a game like Team Fortress 2. So don't miss that 4 p.m. tomorrow. And uh, also, next week, next Thursday, Thanksgiving here in the U.S. It's a holiday. Pilgrims, Celebrate something, turkeys. Uh, so there will be no on the spot next week. And uh, you should use that time to play some of the exciting games that have been coming out over the last 11 months. That's my recommendation. So uh, from me and Ryan Davis, that's going to do it for on the spot this week. Uh, we'll see you two weeks from today. Take care.